Hey, this is attorney Elizabeth Potts Weinstein, and today we're going to talk about how to pay yourself as an LLC. So if you have an LLC or a limited liability company, then you as the owner have different options to pay yourself based upon the tax status of your LLC. So if you don't know the tax status of your LLC, it's probably because you haven't elected anything besides the default. If you have an LLC that is owned by one person, it's just you, then the default, if you don't do anything special, is that it is taxed like a sole proprietorship. And then if you have an LLC that's owned by two or more people, then the default is that it is taxed as a partnership. How you do your payments to yourself as the owner is very similar for a sole proprietorship and a partnership. It's a little bit different, but tiny differences, but generally speaking, it's very similar. The other way you could do it is to elect, file special forms with the IRS to have your LLC be taxed as a S corp or a C corp. That's gonna be very different in how you pay yourself. So let's first talk about the default, the most ordinary way that an LLC owner is going to pay themselves. So if you're a sole proprietor or partnership, what you're gonna do is you're gonna do distributions to yourself. So it's very important that you don't just treat this LLC as an extension of yourself, where you take the debit card for your LLC or the credit card for your LLC and go to the grocery store to do your personal grocery store shopping. If, you, if your LLC earns some kind of profit and you want to take that profit out so you can you know, pay your mortgage or your rent or your bills or buy groceries, then you have to do a distribution. You literally write yourself a check from the LLC to yourself personally. You can do some more fancy things, but I actually literally just write myself a check that's easy to keep track of that creates that paper trail of that distribution to yourself. And then you just keep track of that in the bookkeeping of your LLC. However you do your bookkeeping, whether it is on paper, an Excel spreadsheet, some computerized bookkeeping system, your bookkeeper actually has something, whatever. You just need to keep a paper trail of that distribution. Now, what I highly recommend is that you do distributions on a regular basis. And I mean, you actually schedule them. So once a week, twice a month, once a month, once a quarter, once a year, whatever, it actually doesn't matter. It's what works for your business, what works for you. And then you adjust the amount you pay yourself. So for example, for me, I pay myself a distribution. Actually today I'm recording this on the first of the month and I pay myself a distribution on the first of the month. I write myself a check. Usually it's the exact same amount every month. I kind of have like a default amount. But if I have a bad month, I pay myself less. If I have a great month, I pay myself more. I might pay myself double. The idea is I have that discipline to have a regular schedule. Now there was a time a really long time ago that I had a lot more fluctuations in my business and I didn't have as much sitting in my business checking account. And so because of that, I needed to do distributions kind of more often so I could do them just as money came in because I needed the money personally and the business, like I couldn't like uh, just make random distributions to myself without knowing if I made a profit that that exact week. So I made distributions every week and I would have a distributions where I made zero distribution because I didn't make any money that week. And then next week I made $80 profit and I would pay myself $80. And that's what I mean is, is that in the beginning when you're not making very much money, it can be very tiny distributions or you might have time you have to do zero, you know, but the idea is that you do it on a regular basis. The same thing happens with a partnership as a sole proprietorship. The issue with the partnership is there's multiple people and you may need an agreement either in writing or at least have an agreement orally among the partners of how you're gonna do distributions. This is something that can be very, a, a, a place where partnerships, LLCs taxed as a partnership can go awry <laughs> um, is because they don't have a clear agreement on how they're going to do distributions, how they're going to factor in how much everyone gets paid and do the calculations and also when they're going to do them. So you're going to need to come some sort of arrangement and I highly recommend you do it in writing. It'd be great if you actually had something formal in writing, but you could even just have it literally in writing in a in a document that you all have access to in an email that both sides say that they affirmatively agree to, not just one person sends the email, but the other person says, yes, I agree to that. So you don't have confusion later and end up being a big fight. Similar things apply to partnerships with sole proprietorships. I think with a partnership, because you have to agree what the distribution is going to be, it's better to do it less often. 
So it could be monthly, it could be quarterly. I see a lot of partnership distributions do quarterly, but you can do whatever you want as long as you can come to an arrangement about it. And the reason I talk about quarterly a lot is because when you're doing distributions as a sole proprietorship, or when you're doing distributions to yourself as a partner in a partnership, in an LLC that's taxed as a sole proprietorship, or an LLC that's taxed as a partnership, you have to remember to set aside money for taxes. When you do that distribution, it's just an amount. It's $2,000, whatever. No taxes are taken out, but you're gonna have to pay taxes on that at the end of the year. And if it's too much taxes, and the IRS is gonna be mad that you didn't pay estimated taxes each quarter. Now, if you're only paying yourself $80 a quarter or $100 a quarter, it, it probably doesn't gonna be a very good deal. But if you're paying yourself a distribution that is similar to what a salary would be for someone, working at a full-time job or even a part-time job, you're gonna need to set aside money with each, out of each of those checks that you pay yourself. And then each quarter, do a estimated tax payment to the IRS and maybe also to your state. I recommend that you, if you have a partnership, you have an accountant who is doing your taxes for this reason, because that can become very complicated. There are some partnerships, what they do is they only do a quarterly distribution, some LLCs tax as a partnership, that only do a quarterly distribution so the partners can pay taxes. And then at the end of the year, they kind of catch up with all the rest of the distribution. There's no one right way to do it. It depends on what your business is like and how much things are fluctuating. If you have an LLC tax as a partnership, there's a lot more people involved. And so you're gonna need to have agreements about things and have things a little bit more formal. If you have an LLC tax as a sole proprietorship, it doesn't need to be as formal in the sense as you don't have to have everything in writing with other people agreeing to it. However, it still needs to have a paper trail. So you need to have checks that you're writing yourself, you know, you may actually be able to just transfer the money if your banking is all at the same place, but you still want that paper trail. And then you want it noted in your bookkeeping that you've done a distribution of profits. And as I said, the amount of money really depends on how much money your business is making, how much profit your business is making, not just the gross revenue, the actual income coming in, but how much of it is profit. You got to factor in the expenses that you have on a weekly or monthly basis and also the annual expenses. For example, in my business, I have insurance. I have malpractice insurance that's due once a year. I think it's due in December. And then I have other insurance that's due. I can't remember what that payment is. It's like June or something for my just general business insurance. Those are just one-time payments each year, but I have to make sure the money is gonna be there in the checking account when I have to make that payment. So it's really important for you to factor that in to your calculation of how much profit you can pay yourself so you leave enough money in that account to pay the expenses that you will have in the future. So as I said, the second way that you can have a LLC be structured from a tax perspective is it can be elect, be elected to be taxed as an S corp or C corp. I don't see as many people with LLCs taxed as a C corp. Usually they would just have a C corp if they're going to do that. And so I'm not going to really address how you'd set that up. You'd probably have be working with a bookkeeper if you're going to at that point. But if you have an LLC tax as an S corp, the reason you do that is for this, for how you can pay yourself in more creative ways. So specifically, when you have an LLC tax as an, as an escort, the owner who works in the business can pay themselves two ways, and they actually have to pay themselves two ways. The first way they pay themselves is a salary, the salary for the job you do in the business. So me as a lawyer for my law firm, I pay myself a salary and all the normal, you know, FICAs and all that stuff, taxes and everything are taken out of that paycheck and you actually run payroll. The other way you can pay yourself as an S Corp owner is distributions, just like the way I talked about before, where you just write yourself a check once a month or once a quarter or once a year to pay yourself any other profits. Now you do have to set aside money for taxes there, but it's different because Think of it like when you're doing distributions, it's like you're getting paid interest on a loan that's of money that someone owes you, or it's something that where you owe income tax on it, but you don't have to pay for all the other stuff that's taken out of a paycheck, Social Security, FICA, all that stuff. It's just income tax. So you may say, oh, I want to pay all every profit out at, to me as in a distribution as opposed to in a paycheck. But here's the problem with that. 
is that you're not allowed to. <laughs> the IRS knows that you'd want to do that. One of the reasons we form an, an LLC tax as an S corp is because if you have an LLC tax as a sole proprietorship or partnership, you have to pay self-employment tax on all the distributions. And that self-employment tax is like the social securities and FICAs and all that stuff that comes out of your paycheck. But on an LLC tax and S corp, you only have to pay the equivalent of that, all the social security stuff and everything on the salary part that you're paying yourself not on the distributions. But the IRS is aware that you want to minimize the salary and so they don't let you. There is a rule that you have to pay yourself a reasonable salary. And of course your question to me is going to be, what's a reasonable salary? And the answer is going to be, it has to be reasonable. And I can tell you what's not reasonable because there's a bunch of IRS decisions on that of when they found things not to be reasonable. But what is reasonable is very, very subjective. And so my answer is you need to pay yourself a salary that where you would have a good argument to the IRS if they audited you for why that's reasonable. So for example, you pay yourself a certain amount of money that if you hired someone else to do that part of the job, they would do that or based upon the hours that you work or it needs to have some sort of basis for where you got it from. So as an example of something that's not reasonable, I remember reading a case about a lawyer who paid themselves a salary of $10,000 a year. Well, that's not even minimum wage, okay? No lawyer is gonna work a job for $10,000 a year and then no person can legally have a job for $10,000 a year that's full time because it's not even minimum wage. So they had a terrible argument. Lawyers tend to do, be one of the highest audited groups from the IRS because they make these ridiculous arguments like this that do not stand up. Now, if you had a business where the business only made $10,000 of profits and that's all it made, and then you paid yourself that salary, that would be reasonable because that's all the profits that there were, right? But if you had a business that made half a million dollars of profits and you paid yourself $10,000 salary and the other $490,000 you paid yourself in distributions, the IRS is going to audit you and you're going to lose and pay taxes and penalties and all this stuff. So you just want to have a reasonable argument for how much you're going to pay yourself as salary. Now, how do you actually do that? So what I recommend is if you have an LLC tax as an S corp, you sign up for a payroll system. I use Gusto because when I signed up for this stuff a couple years ago, that was really the only non-traditional payroll system, but there are more that you can find online. I recommend you use one of those systems versus kind of the traditional payroll providers because those are really bet meant for big giant corporations and if you're just running payroll just for yourself or you and a couple other owners of your business it doesn't make sense to have something that fancy pants and you want something kind of more modern that will be easier for you to do they will run the payroll for you they will handle all the tax filings for the employment tax filings it's great i love all those programs they're they're very very helpful now how do you do it how much do you pay yourself and when you can set any schedule you want that works for you. I pay myself weekly because I enjoy getting paid every week and because it helps me be able to adjust. So in 2020, I had weeks where I didn't pay myself at all. I still ran payroll for my employee, but I didn't, run pay, but I didn't pay myself at all or I paid myself half or less of what I normally did because the business was having troubles. So I actually like doing that on a weekly basis because it helps me adjust for if there's a big problem in the business, but you don't have to do it weekly. You can do it every other week twice a month, once a month, once a quarter. I don't rec recommend doing it any less than once a quarter because of the thing I talked about before with estimated tax payments. You want the payroll to be run so the taxes go to the IRS so they're happy. There are some accountants and tax providers and bookkeepers who recommend running payroll once a year. I disagree with that because I think it's risky. If you run payroll once a year, and you haven't been doing your quarterly employment law tax filings, you're going to have problems. And I think it creates potential liability when you really don't need that headache. And running it once a quarter would handle all those issues because you could do the quarterly employment tax filings as they're required and it all works out. I actually like getting paid a lot more often than that. I don't get paid once a quarter. I don't get paid every week. But that's a personal choice, what works for you and your business. There are also some tax providers and accountants, what they do is a reconcile payroll. So they, you pay yourself over the course of the year and then they go back and try to kind of clean it up with this reconcile. I think that's a risk also, but you have to talk to your accountant and see if that makes sense in your particular situation. Now, as I said, for the S corporation, 
LLC tax as an S corporation, you also can do distributions. And in the distributions, you're going to do very similar to what I talked about before, where you write yourself a check or do some other kind of formal payment from your LLC tax as an S corporation to you personally. You make sure money is set aside for your quarterly estimated taxes if you need to do that. And you just keep a paper trail of that in your bookkeeping system. So in summary, the most important things to keep in mind, you need to have a regular schedule. I highly recommend having a regular schedule. You can adjust the amounts of money, but a schedule is gonna be a good disciplined way for you to make sure that everything gets done correctly. You need to have a paper trail of the payments themselves and both when you do the payments as well as keeping track of all the payments that you've made. And if you have an S corporation, if you have an LLC tax as an S corporation, you need to run payroll. The final thing, like I mentioned multiple times, is if you're doing any kind of distributions, that's not a regular payroll kind of distribution where taxes are taken out, you need to set aside money for taxes and you might need to do quarterly estimated tax payments. Talk to your tax provider or look in whatever system you use to file your taxes to do that calculation for you. If you have any questions about what I talked about today, about how to pay yourself as the owner of an LLC, feel free to post them in the comments below and I'll try to get back to you and point you in the right direction. Thumbs up if you found this helpful. Subscribe if you'd like to watch more videos like this. And you can check down in the description below to learn about how to have more contact with me, join the Discord, join the Patreon, all that kind of stuff. Thanks a lot for watching. Talk to you next time. Bye.